I've been southbound, I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow down, standing in the pouring rain. What's going on, guys? Tristan and Tony with the Zero Duck 30 podcast. Uh, we got our buddy Cade Weatherford on uh, for another installment of Keeping It Real with Cade. What's going on, Cade? What's going? What's going? <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, he, the rumor is that Cade Weatherford at Delta Thunder Outfitters and his uh, incredible, incredible sidekick, we're going to call him Delta Grinder, have been smoking some ducks. What y'all been doing? No, nah, we ain't been doing very good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've seen a lot of smiles on, I've seen a lot of smiles on a lot of clients' faces lately. Well, let me do some math here. We've killed 366 ducks in the last six days, so. Wow. <sighs> Boom. That tells Pretty you happy with it. <laughs> yeah, that tells you anything. Goodness gracious. Hey, I guess you've got a, more than a tic-tac-toe then, huh? Didn't you say a tic tac toe three days in a row? I got a tic, I got a tic tac toe. Give a dog a bone. <laughs> <laughs> this old dog, this old dog came rolling home. Bump my cap. You know what it should be? It should be called a turkey. Isn't that what it's called? Whenever you throw three strikes, yeah, I think so. And Is it a turkey? Yeah. Heck yeah, man! That's awesome. That you know, I know that you've had a lot of people from different states and. And I've been there to experience some of those smiles. It's it's great, and I know that's what you live for, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, we try to we try to do our best for uh, all of our guys. You know, sometimes it works out, and sometimes it don't. But uh, we're due for a break. You know, we're due for one. I just hope we can keep it up. I mean, it, there's no rhyme or reason for why the ducks are here. It was 70 degrees yesterday, and we still, it was, it wasn't easy, but we still killed everybody, you know, got everybody killer limit, and uh, I was happy about that, and then today, you know, with Grundy, we're casting and stuff, and we uh, managed to, the last day, they shot their limit, seven limits, and we got them on the road, and that was that. That's awesome. Do you think uh, <clears throat> it's got anything to do with how there was such a sustained freaking uh, little cold push there for a few days where it maybe pushed enough ducks down that even, you know, even though it's warming up, like you're still just getting those like reverse pushes, I guess, maybe? Your, your guess is as good as mine. These ducks are just, they show up overnight. I don't know if they're coming out of the north or south, mm-hmm. um, east or west. I, I don't know. Uh, it's our little area that we hunt in, though, is what's killing them. I mean, it's not like everybody in the everybody around there is killing them. It's just really it's us. Yeah. Um, well, let's and make... why they're doing it is beyond me. Well, let's and let's even expand upon that a little bit. And that is, I mean, you've got a lot of good hunting ground, Cade, and you've got areas that traditionally could just smash them but for whatever reason ducks are being ducks and you got this other area where you guys are hitting them good and maybe another area is not doing as good at the time you know whatever but um there's no rhyme or reason behind it huh there's there's not tony we could tomorrow we could go in where we've been killing them and not kill a duck and then where i haven't been killing any ducks you could end up shooting them really good you know um but I mean, it, it's it's just ask a duck. I mean, that's the best thing I can tell you. What? Duck, they know why. They know why. I don't. There's no reason. There's really no rhyme or reason why we should be shooting this many. What has really saved us is is we've had a lot of teal around, and we've been shooting a majority teal. But we've also shot some other ducks like mallards and. Uh, a lot of pintails. Everybody's killed their pintail limit the last six days. Six um, days. Wow, I mean, that's awesome. It's been, 
It's been we kill widgeons, we kill gadwalls. Um, y'all, the y'all shot have really saved us. Y'all have shot a scalp. You guys have shot uh, a beautiful red. I mean, uh, um, uh, canvas back. Hey, and one uh, one pretty damn cool thing is I know one of y'all shot a banded teal the other day. Why don't you talk about that, kid? Well, the ducks came in, we shot them, and one had a band on it. Yeah, well, <laughs> where was it from? <laughs> and when was it, it banded? From Louisiana. Yeah. It was from it was from Louisiana. Hold on, I'll pull up the thing right now, and I'll tell you. It was from... It was from... It was from... Near East Point, Red River Parish in Louisiana, USA. It was hatched in 2021 and it was banded on February the uh, February the 18th of 2022. So that band ain't even a year old. Huh. And I knew it wasn't We're looking at, just looking at it because it was real clean and everything. And we've I've killed I killed a goose one time. I killed a Canada goose one time that had a band on it. And I knew it wasn't very old, and we called the band in, and it was banded. This was in September during early Canada. I shot that goose. It was banded in June of that year, so about a mile away from where I shot it, too. So Yeah. There's there's a lot of people in uh, Florida that'll, that'll shoot those model ducks because they stay, you know, in the state. They ban them in the state, and then, you know, they get banded a mile from wherever they get shot at and then there's people that have like a lanyard full of model duck bands because they shoot them a mile down the road <laughs> kind of like a goose. right well i'll tell you oh yeah um if if i'm interrupting please please forgive me but no, you're good. um you know one of the coolest things that happened last weekend um was so my brother got Cade was nice enough to let me take my brother out there last weekend my brother hasn't hunted in over 20 years and has never duck hunted and he got to come out there and so if you can imagine y'all especially if you're you guys are out there hunting rice fields and stuff a lot in arkansas um you just don't shoot wood ducks <laughs> i mean you just don't and so um jamie got his first duck we got the land uh throw it right in the spread and let him shoot and he popped it first shot and uh we shot two we shot a, one of the other buddies will and him both shot a drake and a hen mm -hmm. and tristan tells me he goes hey dad I go, what he goes kate said that's the only third and fourth wood duck that, that they've ever shot i was like and so i told jamie that and he was just like wow dude he goes and so it made him really feel like he did something special you yeah, know what i mean cool. yeah yeah, so, but, Cade, you were telling me uh, last night about what was the first two, how'd that go down? It's kind of a cool story. Well, the first year I started my business, the first two ducks we killed, opening day of duck season that year, uh, I was sitting in my pit, too, too lit on the south side of the pit, lit on the water, and the guys I had hunting with me, they were like, shoot them ducks, Cade. And I'm the guide. So I was like, no, you guys shoot them. They were no, no, you shoot them. So I said, all right. So I got up. <laughs> killed both of them. I got up, killed both of them. My dog went out there, brought them back. So Drake, Drake and hen wood duck. And I thought, huh, well, maybe we'll shoot some wood ducks out here. Because there's, you know, it's near some woods. It ain't flooded woods or nothing like that. But it's near the river and everything. Mm -hmm. Haven't shot another one since. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's been, what, five, six years now? Something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. 20, that's 20, 20. Maybe 2019, 2020 season. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, but it definitely made my brother feel like he did something special. So that was cool, man. Um, so, all right. So not to get too far ahead, but y'all, what's your, uh, what are your total count up to? I know you don't like the brag. We're not bragging, but it is a cool count. What are you up to now? Uh, let me tell you. Hold on. We have killed, if my phone will do this calculator thingy, <laughs> 
we have killed 1,017 ducks this year so far. Wow. That's beautiful. That's awesome. And last year's number was 1187. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, man. We got, what, 12 more days to pass that up? Yeah. And you know, Cade is, I don't even have, I probably, I probably don't have you say this, but he's sitting there going, all right, we're very thankful, Lord of Ducks. <laughs> please continue to bless us, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a word. <laughs> Don't jinx it. <laughs> right? No, definitely not. And so another incredible statistic that he shared with me today, Tristan, that I didn't tell you, uh -huh. is Cade, tell these guys, and this is two callers total, Cade and Grinder. Mm -hmm. Tell them how many specs you guys have shot out of a pit blind this year. Uh, 168. Holy cow. Right? Just, that's not, that's not targeting geese. That's while targeting ducks, we have killed a bonus to 168. That specks and snows together. So, wow. I was with I, three bands. Is, so that's <laughs> nuts, man. Wow. Dude, right? He told me that last night. I was like, get out, dude. That is like, I mean, for you to be a duck hunter and going out there and being able to bring home a goose or two, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, basically what he's saying is that a lot of his groups have brought home some specks or snows. And, dude, that's fire. Yeah. I mean, that's some good chunks of meat right yeah. there if you're a meat eater. Yeah, I think all, I think all of them have uh, brought home geese, like, from the... I think from the second season on, I think we've shot geese almost every day. But I know like the last, I think it was the last 28 days, not counting today, because we didn't kill a goose today, but we shot ducks early and were out before the geese started flying. Um, we shot, uh, we've shot several. Well, I think outside of opening weekend, every hunt I've been on, there's been a goose shot there. And that's yeah yeah yep. as waterfowlers we experience all kinds of extreme weather conditions stay bone dry and warm with frog togs hunting gear you can check them out at frogtogs.com or at frog togs hunt on instagram and y'all are gonna see a couple weeks ago i don't know what we're going to name it yet but it was one of the most efficient processes and Cade will say that Tony Vogel was on time this morning. <laughs> and he and I went out. And Kay goes, you want to go shoot some geese? I go, man, I want to go shoot whatever. He goes, well, the ducks aren't flying. We're going to go shoot some geese. I said, all right. And we loaded up. And we'll get all into the story on the video for sure. It's, it's just going to be a short, cool video. But we loaded up, did everything right on time. Bam, bam, bam. Got everything loaded up. Got it on a four-wheeler. Took it out there. Set it up. Set up. What was it? Uh, was it 12, 12 dozen decoys? Six dozen? What was it? How many dozen decoys silhouettes did we set up, Cade? Uh, we've set up 20 dozen. 20 dozen. We set the 20 dozen set up. Which it sounds like a, it sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's they got, they're all silhouettes, so they go out really fast. Yeah, that's, that's the point I'm making is that we literally, Drove about maybe a couple hundred yards, set up the panel blinds, brushed them in, set up decoys. It couldn't have been more than 30 minutes and set that up. And he, one of the things that Kate said off camera was like, who said you can't set up this many decoys and bring in a shit ton of geese? <laughs> Dude, I mean, all I'm going to tell y'all is I can't wait to release it because I hope you can feel the same excitement that I was enjoying because we were getting fired on by geese. I mean, it was a big feed that was falling on us, and it was very cool. But in a nutshell, we went in there, waxed their ass, and we were sitting in the Cracker Barrel at 1045. That's beautiful. And we were not even – we actually set up a little bit later because we were taking care of some of his um, some of his hunters. Mm -hmm. You know, so we were just making sure they were taking care of stuff before we even went out. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, in, uh, as Kate says, just like that. <laughs> <laughs>
Damn, that Cracker Barrel has got me hungry. That sounds good. <laughs> it's good stuff. You can't miss out yeah. on Cracker Barrel. Hell no. So, uh, so Cade, I got, I got to get you on to get your uh, rebuttal about the Drake Mallard and the decoys with Katie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she got on here the other day. She got on her little podcast the other day and talked some shit, so now it's my turn. And this is what they did in the duck blind together, so. <laughs> yeah. So I talked, uh, I, I told I told everybody that morning, so I was, I was telling everybody, you know, uh, you know, if we get a single mallard drake or something like that, come in, Katie, I want you to shoot it. She said, okay. And she was, that was the morning she was sitting next to me, correct? Yeah, yeah, you're, uh, that one field where it was sunny that day yeah yep but anyway sure enough a little while i mean a little while later we have one single mallard drake very beautiful bird <laughs> i mean just biggest biggest one i ever seen <laughs> biggest fattest mallard drake i ever seen double banded Boone and crockett Boone and crockett double banded neck collar transmitter on its back gold chain with the gold teeth <laughs> And everything <laughs> came in there <laughs> came in there probably 10 or 12 feet um she was shooting my benelli um super black eagle 320 gauge with uh i think it was three inch number like 20 shot size 20 so it has like about a uh, about a 30 feet foot radius of shot to shoot <laughs> It's equivalent to shooting a punt gun. <laughs> um, anyway, it came in there uh, very close. Realistically, about probably 20 yards. Probably. Perfect little shot. And she whiffed all three times. I didn't hear her say anything about that on the podcast the other day. So <laughs> we, had, we had to had to keep it fair and bring it up. <laughs> Yeah, I had to make sure I kept it fair. Yeah, got got to keep it real on the Zero Duck Thirty podcast. Yep, keeping it real, keeping it real with K. There you go, that's perfect. Trying. <laughs> well, uh, uh, go ahead. No, I, I'm good. You go ahead and say whatever <laughs> you got to say. Bud. No, I was just gonna say I was like. Uh, you got me thinking about when you were on here talking about the mojos and Ferris wheels and all that stuff because you were talking about the mount. Tony, you just missed it. He went out to pee. You yeah, missed... you guys, you guys got a, you guys got a sponsor with Mojo, right? Uh, um, we're not a sponsor. We're just like brand ambassadors. Legally, yeah, we're, we're not... brand ambassadors. Yeah, brand ambassadors. I don't know what that means. So essentially, I can tell you that. Go ahead. I can tell you that that. Uh, Mojo is going downhill. Yeah, they are going downhill, and the reason why is because they're making this rubber decoy stuff. I bought two of them, and they 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 don't. They're not even two weeks old, and both of them don't work. That you get them out in weather and stuff like that. They need to go back huh. and start building the original brand mojo the hard plastic one they used to have a big mojo and a baby mojo mm -hmm. they were the best two that they ever made right there and that big mojo that i got i hunted i duck hunted with it for probably seven eight years i had it and it finally just quit hmm. and i went to go buy another one they're not made the same way you need to ask the guys at mojo yeah to make it they Make just, the big mojo they like just they showed to. it off. They just brought back the original mojo. Did they? Yep. They I don't just, see, I don't, just brought I don't back. see one on the shelf, though, at Academy. I don't right. see one on the shelf anywhere. Right. They right. need it there. They can show it off all they want. It doesn't matter if I can't use it. Right. Yep, yep. Huh. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be interested to see how the King Mallard we have does. I mean, it, like you said, I think it's uh, got a little bit of that softer plastic on it. And I, really, the first season we've used it, it's been this year, but it's you know, only been used probably maybe six times, maybe. Here's nine, the, nine times, well, I don't know. And here's the bottom line. Um, 
from a hunter's perspective, I mean, let's just face it. Um, you know, one of the things that we're very appreciative of is the relationship that we do have with Mojo. And we have seen great results out in the field and stuff like that. But at the same time, I know they respect us as hunters at the same time where we're out there using the stuff. And the only way that you can get the feedback on a product and be a company that's in business for years is to listen to the people that use your products, right? It's no different than you buying a shirt at, you know, the buckle or whatever it is, you know, wherever you buy your clothes, it's the same thing, right? I mean, you got to build it based on customer demand and customer input and good companies do that. So, you know, hopefully um, Mojo will be looking at those things and listening to this Hunter feedback and, and, and work to improve their product because, Here's one thing I will say that I have no problem with bringing up. And, you know, I was talking to Cade, you know, he and I were driving around one afternoon scouting for ducks. And I just asked him about, you know, what's his experience been with the different, um, different types of brands out there that, you know, create movement. And one of the things that he's brought up that I think is an, is really a great point is, you know, we have no affiliation with Lucky Duck whatsoever. Zero. But he makes a great point that he goes, when I go to the store and I buy a Lucky Duck, it is ready to go on remote immediately. He goes, I can go buy 12 of them. And they're all ready to go. Now, you're going to pay a little bit extra money for them. But what are some of the things that you see that they're doing right? Okay, I'm a guide, right? Yep. I'm a guide. I don't have time to... I, if Like, literally, I can't tell you how many times I bought decoys and rigged them up in the field, like, all, like at the truck, waiting for my clients, rigged them up, and then ran them out there, threw them out real quick, then came back and got my clients and hunted over them. All right? Same with Mojo's. Uh... Lucky Duck, I can I can literally the night before buy one, and I don't have to sink or remote. Like my Mojo is bad about, uh, you know, you got to sink the remote with this, or you got to unplug this wire, then plug this little box into this. I don't mind. I, duck hunters have money. They have money. Every I want to say ninety percent of them, people that duck hunt have money. And they're willing to spend it. Go ahead and put one that's it's ready to go out of the box. Mm -hmm. Lucky Duck, it, they don't give you an option. You get a damn remote with your Lucky Duck. You're getting one. And if you don't want to use it, it's got a little switch on there where you can turn it off. And you can just use the switch on the bottom. Mm -hmm. But they don't give you an option. You're getting a remote. And you don't have to plug in. You don't have to buy the separate plug in that plugs into the Mojo and mm -hmm. links up to that remote. That the, all those Lucky Ducks are compatible. Make it one way. Make it one thing. Yeah, right. one thing. And the the more stuff, I I don't have time to hunt down this and that. And I don't. You got to have three different parts for those Mojos. Like you got to have the new ones that I bought. You got to have the remote. I bought the remote, the microchips that go into them, and then the mojos themselves. And then on top of that, you got to, you know, it comes with it, but you got to have the wings and the pole. But that's a lot of items there. Lucky Duck, you got remote, Lucky Duck, pole, charger. Mm -hmm. You charge the thing up the night before, and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about syncing anything up, nothing. And we use those remotes not as... You know, a lot of people buy them and they think, oh, well, what you do is, is you turn it off and that saves your battery. And when you see some ducks, you turn it on. No, mm -hmm. we leave them running. We leave them running. And when we see geese, geese do not like mojos. Mm -hmm. And if you got them running, your chances of killing geese with mojos running are very hard or very slim here. Now, I have seen videos of guys up in the Dakotas killing ducks and geese both over with mojos running but here our geese do not like they don't like mojos they don't like they, they see them and they'll flare like you shot at them huh. and they don't like it 
So what we use that remote for is you see some geese, some low specs or whatever, you cut them mojos off and they'll just keep flying the same route and you call them and curiosity will kill them a lot of times. But if you got mojos going, you might as well be out there in the decoys waving your arms at them. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm a witness. That's what it's like, so. For sure. No, I mean, I, that's, the, that's the big deal with I the, witness it so many lucky times. Duck deal. Yeah. Well, the lucky duck deal, it's, it's, you know, you're ready to go. I mean, that's, there's exactly. no beating around the bush. You get it in the box and it's ready to go. No linking nothing unless you want to link mojos together. Mm-hmm. They sell one pack that comes with two mojos that are linked up right in the box. And I don't use more than two unless there's a bunch of teal around. Then I'll use a bunch of mojos. I'll use up to four max. No more than that. But the lucky ducks, I can run up to like, I think it's 12 or 15 on one remote. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> well, um, so I don't ever, I don't ever plan on running that many, but if I wanted to, I could. You want to hear a funny, uh, well, funny fact real quick? Well, before we leave the mojo thing, like, the so one like couple things I've observed kind of the same thought like Kate has said. Do you want coffee that doesn't suck? Get the duck. Dirty duck coffee is made specifically for the waterfowl enthusiast. Enjoy flavors like morning wood, dark dynasty, cinnamon teal snickerdoodle, and first flight to unlock the flavor that you'll enjoy in the blind for years to come. Our friends at Dirty Duck Coffee Company are now offering all Zero Duck Thirty followers. A 15% discount when you use code zero duck 15 on your next order. <laughs> so the King Mallard, like the one that we have, K, that big Mallard, that one is ready to go out of the box. But what I will say about some of the other, like some of the things I've been frustrated with is like, we went to Academy one time and bought the green wing teal. Yep. And we thought, you know, they were going to be like, like, the same thing is like the some, elite series. Yeah. Like, you know, constructed well. And it's one of those ones where you got to put the batteries into it, like literally double A's and all that. And it's just like, it's a little flap that covers that up. Yep. And it's just asking. It's like the go, dove mojo. Yeah. It, to me, when I like, I agree with you, Kate, about like, why even make a product like that? Just make them all consistently a better. Make have one line. That's all great. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Like, well, it's, why, it's, it's not, it's not like you're buying a car. Uh, you're not looking at cloth seats versus leather seats. Right. You're not looking at sunroof versus no sunroof. You're buying a $200 electronic duck that spins its wings. Mm-hmm. Make them all one way. Don't make it complicated. Make all of them one way. Mm-hmm. And make every one of them that way. Make the teal that way. Make the... Make the and, and I'm not even talking about putting the... I mean, you don't have to put the teal on the remote. The ones that they make in a little box right now that cost about 40 60 bucks and you put double a batteries in them and put them they're fine i've got one that i've shot probably 20 times and it still works Mm -hmm. and and uh that's fine you know you can make the little teal mojos but i would just go ahead and make one line that you know all your mallard stuff give a remote and put a little off switch on the side of it just like lucky duck does and turn it off and if you don't want to use a remote then don't take the remote you know sure yeah uh well, turn the remote off and well i think leave it at the house and take the mojo you know i think what it is is like they have so many different lines you mm-hmm. know from top to bottom and price ranges and stuff and i don't think ever based on a availability and what kind of store it is like they probably don't stock you know you know, maybe they don't have their best product stocked in every store. Maybe that goes first. And then when you go to buy a decoy, it's like, oh, well, let me get the next best one. And then you're dealing with all these remotes and shit, which I know what you're talking about when you got to sync them and all that. Yeah. No, I think, you know, it, but, like, but it's, it's too much. It's too I agree, much. Yeah. Too well, much. it's just the point you made about that is as a duck outfitter and guide, mm-hmm. you've got enough shit to worry about mm-hmm. straight up. Mm hmm. I don't need to worry about, you know, doing a jumping jack and a backflip to try to get this hunt to work. I just need stuff to go quick, easy, reliable, boom. Yeah, just, 
It's like um, the difference between like if you get a meat grinder for your house versus like a meat grinder in a commercial kitchen or like a blender or any of that. There's no shit. replacement for a good tool. Yeah, it's like yeah. It's, any contractor will tell you that. Yeah, there it is. Contractor yep. analogy. Boom. Yeah. yeah, I mean, hammer versus a uh, 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 an air hand or air gun. Well, what, yeah. well the the, ha- the hammer you got going on there, it's just like needing an electric hammer. You mm-hmm. don't need it. A right. hammer works. Right. Mm-hmm. If it's built good. That's the thing. That's the thing. Good stuff. So, all right. So this whole thing you just talked about with this geese and the mojos and all that stuff. I want to talk about that real quick from my experience this weekend. So, you know, Cade and Grinder were out there busting their asses for the clients this weekend and guiding those folks and stuff and, and smoking the ducks, you know, so we were out, you know, and me and Tristan and a couple other guys, my brother and stuff, we were all out hunting stuff. And that couldn't be further from the truth, man. I mean, you saw it firsthand this weekend, Tristan. Mm-hmm. How many times did I have to run out? You had the King Mallard on a remote mm-hmm. until the battery died. Yeah. How many times when specs were coming in did I go running out to the spread and shut that green wing off, Mm -hmm. which is one of their most reliable good ones. That's like the cheap one that you were talking about. It just, it's like their little battle horse. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Cade was talking about too. Yeah. How many times I have to run out there and shut that thing off? And how many times did you see geese flare on those, on that thing? Well, you probably did five or six times, but uh, I mean, it paid off twice for sure. I mean, uh, if we, I, I when mean, we saw that big feed get up, I just run out there, like sprint out there and shut that mojo off. But like he's saying, you know, yeah. I mean, it's down to convenience as a guide. It's showing off the professional mm-hmm. image of your company. When you're able to pull those professional moves to put your clients on waterfowl, give them a better advantage. It's something that you have to do, I think. Right. Yeah, you know, for sure. You can't be just running out there like I was. You know, I look like a goofball. <laughs> well, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just it's just as simple as this guys i've got 18 people hunting with me right now i got two self-guided groups five in each group and then i've got eight guided guys Mm -hmm. a group of five and a group of three uh i've got one polaris that's working i've got one that is done i mean it's totaled out it's done it didn't get wrecked or nothing just the wiring harness is done on it and it's done i mean there's no fixing it Mm. Uh, I don't have time to worry about little things like a mojo True. or a lucky duck or whatever. It should be, the little things should be very simple. Yep. And I get what mojo's doing. It's cool and all, but it there is too much. It's yeah. way too much stuff. No, it's I get it. Yeah. Too, too many remotes, too many plug this into that and hit this button until it sinks and then it works and then the next morning you take it out there and you put it out and it doesn't work it's too much yeah no that makes complete sense to me man i mean you you're definitely looking through it you know a different kind of lens than you know most the majority of people but you know you're not everybody runs a business like you do too you know right right well, yeah. and, and one of the things that my brother actually talked to me about Monday night was, he goes, dude, I had no idea that, you know, he has all that stuff to do all the time. Yeah. And, I mean, this weekend, just in this weekend, you know, I watched Cade build two different blinds that were floatable just because uncontrollable water conditions just to put his clients on ducks where he was out there until three o'clock in the morning doing all this stuff the night before hunters come in that, you know, he doesn't go up to his hunters and just be like, Hey, did you know all the work I had to do just to get you on a good hunt? No, of course not. You know, that's something you just, you keep to yourself and that's what you're getting with. That's what I love the most about what you're getting with Delta Thunder Outfitters. I mean, seriously, it's a grind for anybody that does this day in, day out. I mean, Cade's be the first one to admit to you he's ready for goose season, <laughs> you know. But yeah, the, the fact never been more ready. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that there is a lot of work that goes in to making things right, putting yourself in the best success, but the best successful position. 
for sure. <clears throat> so, I want to, I want to uh, pick your belly a little bit there, Mister Cade Weatherford. I already ate. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to give all of our listeners the Cade Weatherford opinion on duck surveys and what they mean versus what the boots on the ground guys like you see. And I know you've got some good opinions about this and I'd like our folks to hear it. It's all bullshit. It's a <laughs> lie. Keep diving brother. Well, Tony, what did I tell you before duck season started? You tell everybody. He told me and Tristan this. I love it when the duck reports are terrible because we shoot the shit out of them. <laughs> yep, he did. And he told us this, and the duck reports come out. that Am I right by saying that the green wing teal was a 21% or 19%? It was a there high. There was some dramatic loss it was in a, a lot of s- them, yeah. And Cade, what's the number one bird y'all shot this year? Teal, and we've seen more of them. I've seen more teal this year than I have in the last 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep rolling on this subject because I think there's some worth to this. And let me speak out for all the data analysts out there right now. Also, I'm going to say is if you, you're large, if you're you think, if you think you can estimate all day long. But the fact of the matter is, is technology has changed what we have at our grips. But these old surveys and the way that they do all these surveys up in Canada and North, or North uh, America, up in the prairie potholes and all that stuff, y'all need to get on board with the technology road because there's a better way to do it. Just because we've been doing it the same way for 50 years doesn't mean that's the same way that we have to continue to do it. Now... Hopefully they're looking at that technology. I'm sure they are. And and trying to improve it. But for a guy, boots on the ground, he sees, he sees it completely different. So keep jumping into that, please. I can tell you this. Pintails are a one bird limit. And they need to be, like, you should be able to kill four of them. There's that many. Like, there's a ridiculous amount of pintails. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm talking about if we're not seeing teal, then 90 percent of the ducks we see are pintails. I would totally agree with that. And I would agree too. If these and if if these biologists don't believe me, you can call me. I'll take you hunting. You can hunt with me every day of season. You can sit there and I'll show you. It's been that way for the last three years. I think and. I'll tell you, last year, if we could have killed six pintails a piece per person, we could have killed six pintails a piece per person. For sure. Easily. Yeah, yep. no, we, I agree we with that. We witnessed that all day long. Yeah. I think there was days There was days last year that we could have killed 100 pintails, and there's days this year we could have killed 100 pintails. Without even calling. But you, it's a, it's a one-bird limit, and that I don't care what data you've got. It's not right. I know every pintail in the world when I'm seeing a bunch of pintails and then my stepdad's guys that hunt 15 miles to the east of me are seeing a bunch of pintails. And then my buddies that hunt an hour south of me are seeing a bunch of pintails. What does that tell you? And guys in the public timber are shooting pintails. (laughs) I think the only thing I've heard about pintails, the only reason I could think maybe why they have a one bird limit is they're the most, as far as like, um, how sensitive they are to changes in their breeding grounds. Big time. If, if it's not a perfect breeding condition for a pintail, they just won't lay an egg. Like, no. Other ducks will kind of adapt and shit, apparently. But I guess maybe that's why that limits only ones, because they're concerned about how finicky they are about laying their eggs, I guess. It takes the know. average well, pintail. They, they, they've, been, they've been finding places to lay them, I promise. <laughs> well, it takes... <laughs> in, in, cr- finding places. Um, Doctor, whoever you are out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just going to throw a, a, a little bit of broad range here. The average pintail, if if they have this great breeding, breeding grounds, right, they go back to it and it's not there. It usually takes them at least one to two, somewhere in there, 
to establish a new habitat to breed. Years? Uh, yeah. Okay. Seasons. It has to go, because they show up the, that one season, they go, nope, we're not doing it. Boom. Yeah. They may still not do it the next season because they haven't quite figured it out. Now, that falls big time in line with the droughts up in the prairie potholes, up in the Dakotas, especially up in the up in um, Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, it plays a big role in that. And so I know, that, I mean, we have enough data scientifically to show that there's been a big shit the pintails off to the west. And, of course, everybody knows that there are plenty in the, in the west coast. Mm-hmm. But our, you know, central and Mississippi flyways, those ducks, they've definitely said, have shifted more to the west where the water was. Hmm. And so who knows, you know, if there was a, a baby boom amongst them, but I will attest to exactly what he said. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. I mean, me and Tristan witnessed it last year where we could just sit there and it was probably the easiest duck hunt of our life. Yeah. And, you know, it was funny because it was like, I no think, calling. I think nothing. It was one of those days, Kate, like you said, if you could shoot a hundred of them, you could. It was yeah. me, Grinder, uh, that one dude, and my dad. And, uh, we shot the four pintail on a few mallards, but then like the rest of the morning, pintails, pintails. would just lay into the decoys, and you're like, "All right, well, I can't <laughs> shoot them." So <laughs> <laughs> it's just where they wanted to be. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So anyway, but the thing to be in, in a nutshell for me on that whole subject is us as duck hunters, we are boots on the ground, right? Mm-hmm. We're out there. Our partners at HuntWise are offering an exclusive discount for Zero Duck 30 followers. As an elite member, some of the features you'll immediately gain access to are HuntCast, WindCast, peak kill times, property lines, owner information and phone lookup, 250 map layers, unlimited offline maps, 3D maps, social media, and on top of it all, save up to 50% off some of the top hunting brands in the industry. Download and explore the number one hunting tool set today and save 20% by using code DUCK30. And analyzing all this stuff. There's there's a reason why there's a successful show called Undercover Boss. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the people at the top don't realize what's going on with the boots on the ground. And the way they make their company better is through this show, Undercover Boss. So they can go through and say, I want to flip burgers at McDonald's. I'm the CEO of McDonald's, but I'm going to go flip burgers and learn this business better. And there's definitely something that's got to change there because there's too much of a disconnect from what I hear from people like Kay that are literally duck hunting Mm -hmm. every single day of the season. Kay, I got one that you'll like about avian bird flu. Oh, God, let's hear it. So uh, this guy that I know that hunts Arkansas a good bit, but also is a Georgia boy, he uh, did this Georgia quota hunt last weekend, and they shot a few spoonies or whatever, but the biologist wanted to check their spoonies. And the biologist told him that there's only been 13. Now, I don't know how factual, whatever, but the, apparently the biologist told him there's only been 13 confirmed duck cases of avian bird flu in the whole state of arkansas well it's just it's mother nature running its course Mm -hmm. uh it happens you know everything you know you got cwd with deer and elk and mule deer and everything Mm -hmm. but you know and it's mainly i mean the the across the board most scientists and stuff will agree that it's been mostly juveniles well and what juveniles you know cade was saying the other weekend is like you know there, you know, you there's been wounded snow geese and stuff in Arkansas forever, and wounded whatever, and then you see them, and then a lot of people think those are oh avian bird flu, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and the biologist was telling this guy that a lot of a lot of the cases that are coming up reported as avian bird flu are just some other disease that the what bird about has. the report that I just read last week? Mm. The report that I read that was out of was it Washington? Mm-hmm. About, they found ninety something birds. Yes, so it's a that yeah, same and, and a lot of. Those. I don't remember what, but it was a bacterial disease that killed the majority with, of the birds. With Kate, have you heard of birds? They were talking about with like rotted rice fields and stuff, like birds getting weird little bacterial, bacterial infections. infections and shit from, from that. Rot- uh, ice breast. 
Yeah, stuff like that. He like didn't. Fair, it yeah, didn't call but it. That's in the same. Yeah, genre yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, we we've, we've killed some birds that had rice breasts before. Mm-hmm. We yeah. killed some that had rice breasts, uh, and you're not supposed to eat them, so we don't. Um, <laughs> that's all I know. Yeah, I've got a lot of friends of mine that used to pull bass out of ponds and be like, "Oh, they got these." We call them. I think we call it rice something else with bass, but. Really? They were like, oh, bro, they cook off. I go, you can kiss my ass, bro. I ain't eating none of that. Dude, this, <laughs> this is like kind of, I feel bad about saying this, but like we last time me and Katie went fishing with Mario, uh, we I think we tried like offshore and it wasn't really working. So we came back and did some bottom fishing and we caught these big ass amber jacks, like 25 pound amber jacks. And we bring them in, bring them back to the house or whatever and fillet them and no word is said to this. I'm like, Mario's like, oh yeah, you can take them home. They cook up good, whatever. We fillet them and the the fillets are full of worms. And Mario just looks at me and he's like, oh yeah, you just cook them out, whatever. It's no big deal. And I'm thinking in my head like, dude, I'm going to take these out of respect, but I'm not f-ing cooking these worms out of these breasts. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no way I'm doing that. Hell yeah. Oh, it's so gross. <clears throat> You excited to yep. get on your uh, little fishing project before uh, too long, Cade? Uh, your... I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. We gotta gotta hit a profit margin first. Yeah. What's the What's the state of the boat? I gotta get some gauges put on it. I gotta get some new tires put on the trailer and get her all tagged up and everything. And that's about it. Heck yeah. So, a little bit of work. Hopefully, we get enough snow goose hunters. We still got available dates, and we just got to get some snow goose hunters in there. And... Well, if y'all are listening to this and want to book, book snow goose hunt, there's been people reached out to us, um, like, here in the last couple of weeks about booking a duck hunt, and I know that your books pretty much for duck hunts have been... It's full, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, when everybody else did. Exactly. So, like, we even, I think somebody we know reached out recently, and I was like, dude, you can call him, but I just can tell you that he started booking July 1st, and I know he's probably booked, but if you're listening to this, call about Snow Goose. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you what, this just made me think about something cool that we got coming up, y'all. So, one of the things that we did a few weeks ago is, you know, uh, as we've told you before, there's no, like financial affiliation between us and Delta Thunder Outfitters at all. Okay, it's just our buddy and we're his buddy and dollars a year. And he won't admit it, but he invi- he uh in- included us in his wedding party. <laughs> no, I felt sorry for these guys, so I had to do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but point being is is that we're coming uh Kate and I went in together and we got something really special coming up. That's going to basically give you all, if you just spend about 10, 15 minutes and you really want to know what Delta Thunder Outfitters is all about, we're going to walk you through the story and the experience of what you're going to, what you're going to go through when you go there. I mean, he can't always promise ducks. I mean, that's, that's a big mother nature thing, but if you're into an experience that is one that you'll remember for a long time, this is what it's going to walk you through mm-hmm. is this video. And we'll be having that coming out soon. It's going to be based on, you know, Tristan's working on some stuff and uh, he does a lot of the editing with that. And, and uh, we did a nice little interview with Cade and I think it's really going to give everybody a, a really good image of what you get when you go to Delta Thunder Outfitters. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I'm excited about that. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It'll be good. <laughs> There's even a uh, outro clip before we start of me and Cade singing uh, what's that song called by David Allen Co? Um, you don't have to call me, me darling. <laughs> we we're, were singing that. There's a video of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be good stuff. So, Cade, what is on the radar is look, now I am in a very uneducated goose hunter and I've been there for three years now. And as everybody knows, if you follow us, 
I mean, I put 34,000 miles on my truck going to Arkansas last year. I still can't even gauge what I've been seeing as far as geese. I mean, it has been way more geese than I've ever seen this year. Talk about that. There's so when I was a kid, you know, it wasn't nothing. You just walk outside and, you know, you'd see geese in there. You drive around down the back roads and everything, and there was geese. You know, if you drove anywhere, there would be a field, I mean, a field just full of geese, 80 acres of geese. And then you drive another half mile away, there'd be another field of them. It was just like that. Um, right now, I mean, when a lot of people, when goose hunting started to get commercialized around here, it that all went away. I mean, like, you didn't see that. But now, I mean, there's this year there's more geese than I've seen in probably 15 years. Wow. I mean, um, y'all, I've seen some feeds that, like, even my brother this past weekend, I told him, I said, you're going to see some stuff that's like National Geographic worthy. Like I've never seen any a movement of animals like that in my life. Well, I'm super excited. We got the same farms that we had last year. And then I picked up another 4,600 acre farm yesterday. So that's going to give my clients a lot more opportunity wow. to chase feeds and uh, give a lot more places for us to traffic geese. So I'm jacked. I mean, I'm I'm ready to get through duck season so we can start shooting white geese. Um, Forty six hundred acres. Just to give you guys an idea, how much property that is. That is in a square. That's roughly eight square miles. That's a lot. That is a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> we got close to twenty one thousand acres that we hunt on. Wow. Wow. Dude, I can't wait for freaking um we'll be out there for Veterans Weekend. I'm just gonna be filming obviously and uh I can't wait. You better be shooting on Sunday. That's what I'm saying, dude. The opening day of Snow Goose. I cannot wait. (laughs) (laughs) I've got four I've got five cases of shells I gotta go pick up tomorrow. Dude, I can't Uh, wait. That's a lot of shells. (laughs) Cade's gun looks like a stormtrooper gun, dude. I've seen it. Dude, it's 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 got this. How many shells do you shoot out of that thing? Thirteen. What? (laughs) Thirteen. Dude, have you all seen this? It looks like a he's got it all spray painted. It it looks like rustic enough that it was literally through some wars. You know, it just looks like a battle gun. Do you what kind of chuck you shoot out of that? Like an extra full or a full? Extra full. Hell yeah. Extra powerful. That's beautiful. Code black, baby. You got a uh, choke company you swear by or like a lot? I like Pattern Master and I also I also like Jebs. I love those two. Nice. Um my last Pattern Master I had I shot through it for 14 years, and this year I cracked it in half. Mm. And so I think I got my hundred dollars worth out of it. And I bought another one just like it, and slapped it back in the gun, and she's going again. Is there one that uh, do Jebs or Pattern Master? Like, could I find like that at Academy or Bass Pro? You got to order them off like a website. I bought them at my local sporting goods store, so I'm pretty sure you could find them at. I don't know about Academy or Academy kind of <laughs> sucks, but. Mm-hmm. Um, Bass Pro, yeah, probably. So uh, pattern. Now, if you now you got to understand, out here in Arkansas, we're hunting fields, we're hunting law. I mean, like open, mm-hmm. open area. If you're hunting somewhere like you're hunting timber, or you're hunting over a little cattle pond or something like that, you don't need any extreme range stuff. You need like a mid range, close range choke. Mm-hmm. And but I tell you that Pattern Master is super reliable. I've made some incredible shots with it. Uh, y'all were there that morning that I shot that goose. We were hunting that blind. Yep. I shot the goose behind us. Yeah, it was probably a good 60 yards. <laughs> yeah. It was way up there. Um, uh, reason I'm asking is because, so you're, you're pretty familiar with no, or Benelli, right? I mean, pretty much that's like. I love Benelli shotguns. I own, I own seven of them. Okay. So <laughs> with a, somebody was talking about the other day, like, and I'm too dumb to know. So, is there a difference in the type of choke tube that a Nova takes versus, like, because you know I shoot that Nova versus, like, what, like, maybe a Super Black Eagle shoots or them two or whatever? 
I don't know. I know that the Benelli Super Vinci, which is the gun that I guide with, mm-hmm. it takes a cryo choke and a Super Black Eagle. I have those two. Mm-hmm. I got the one. I got the Super Black Eagle two and the three. Yeah. They all take the same. I think they take the same choke. Mm-hmm. No, I think the three takes a cryo as well. Okay. And the two and the other ones, the Benelli M1, the Benelli M2, the Benelli M190, the Benelli uh, Monte Feltro, I think they take a different choke, and I can't remember what it is. Okay. Because I think I was looking, because my dad just got it. I, I just shoot a modified choke. I've never touched the choke ever since I got the gun from my dad. And, you know, it works all right, but, like, I just the more I, like, everyone that I see out there pretty much uses, like, a full choke. And, uh... Full. Not just full. Because you want it to be extra hard when it hits them. (laughs) Now, with with your Snow Goose gun, do you shoot three and a half inch shells or threes? Threes. You just shoot shoot three, two... I shoot uh, three inch number twos at everything. Ducks, geese, everything. The only thing I... At uh, don't shoot those at is teal during early teal season. I'll shoot fours or sixes, mm-hmm. but you know, you're shooting pretty close range. And I won't shoot a, I'll shoot a modified choke too. Uh, because a lot of times, you know, you're shooting them 15 yards or you know, 20 yards or less, you know. Sure. Um, boy, for early teal this year, we got a good setup. I got a pontoon blind we're gonna put on that reservoir. It's gonna be- <laughs> I have some, me, we'll have to talk about that sometime on a podcast. Tristan, I have years back knowledge of this vessel. We do. Big facts. It's a South Georgia, is- South Georgia vessel. Yep. All the way back to our first year to hunting. Yep. Down Southeast well, Georgia. Hunt out of again, but with somebody that knows how to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we are. Down there, that's about the only thing we do kill down there. So, yeah. <laughs> but well, no. you got some other things. Let's talk about some of these other things you got going on with Snow Goose. I mean, this is what's coming up, and this what I mean when I'm out there uh-huh. on the grind, and we're in the truck in between hunts and whatever, and we're just having sharing some buddy time. What Kate is telling me is, dude, I'm ready for goose season. You know, and one of the things you got coming up with, what's this mobile blind thing you got going on with Snow Goose? Because oh I, yeah. I'm in the process of building a mobile blind. So we usually hunt panel blinds, you know, if the, depending on weather, you know, like if it's cold or if it's raining or whatever. So I thought, why not we just buy, I said, I'll buy a, like an old camper trailer frame. And that's exactly what I did. And we'll build a blind that we can just pull down a field road and you just pull it down a field road with my little tractor and set it up. And you got the decoys in there, and you just set, you just tell everybody get in the blind. You pull them out there in the blind, and then set it up, and then set your like a hayride, up. like a hayride. Oh, bro, I can go for a hayride for geese. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> That's beautiful. But no, we're gonna make nice. We're gonna put a little cooktop stove in there and everything like that. So, you know, if it's cold and everything we can we can hunt off field road or we can even pull it out in the field if we need to but it's it'll look just like you know just like an island of trees growing somewhere uh we the same is the same concept as panel blinds uh same deal it's just a panel blind on wheels that's awesome man so instead of setting up blinds and decoys you're just setting up decoys yeah we're taking out one big step, so no kidding. That that alone's got to save an hour, probably. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, from when we did that spec hunt, I mean that was the only time I really saw it, but that took a good bit just setting up those, you know, setting up those panel blinds well, each morning. Spec move, early spec, we'll be able to pull it out the field, and drop mm-hmm. it. That simple. Think the think about the efficiency behind that though, really. I mean, as far as getting in, getting out, not disturbing a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. You just come in creeping with this magical island. Uh, we're uh, gonna build. We're gonna build this one. It's panel blind on wheels, original, and we're gonna see how it works. And if it works, we're gonna build panel blind on wheels 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We'll be able to hunt like 20 people, and it'll take half the time. 
Okay. No, I love it. Uh, so, you, you know, you're saying you're seeing a lot more snow geese than you normally, or a lot of more geese than you normally do. Uh, is that with specks and snows, or is it just snows? or no, both? Snows. There's a lot oh. of specks. There's not as many as there was last year. Okay. Uh, but I'll tell you, last year we were seeing thousands. This year we're seeing in the millions. I mean, just to compare the differences. Wow. That's a big difference, dude. That's crazy. I mean, you see, that's last ten year, times. Last last year, you see, you know, just let's talk about them sitting on the ground in the field. Last year, you see, you know, thirty acres covered. This year, you're seeing hundreds of acres covered. You know, there'll be a two mile stretch of geese sitting on the ground somewhere. <laughs> Holy shit! And so this weekend, you guys might be goose hunting, uh, depending on what we got because i got this farm that i just picked up has got a bunch of geese on them Let's but right it. now wow duck, so i'm not gonna mess with them but if the duck hunting gets slow then we're all gonna go goose hunting let's smoke some geese man yeah man whatever <laughs> i you know i like i've been on some goose hunts that like you know we got pretty much close to the limit or whatever but like everyone i've been on with uk you're like nah that ain't nothing so in the I'm I'm waiting for the me to be the there big for spin. one. Yeah, you're like, no, nah, that ain't nothing. <laughs> you got to quit going to these damn weddings every week. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Tell all your buddies to not get married. Listen, Stay single. Well, Stay I, smart. Th- this year I'll actually be able to spend some time out there for snow goose, so that'll be good. Well, we got a good line of people coming. We got some good weekends coming up. You need to bring Katie out for when them girls come hunting with me. Mm-hmm. They see this podcast, but they're the easiest group of people I get every year. They smoke them every time they come, so I'm ready for that. Heck yeah, man. Well, good deal. Right on. Right on, man. Well, man, dude, I'm going to see uh, well, I mean, I guess we'll see you again Friday. Yeah. Friday night. Yeah, man. Yeah, that'll work. All right, man. We got to get to work. Whatever we got to do. Let us know, and uh, we'll be uh, chatting along the way and bugging you every day to know what you shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, hey, you will. Dude, it's it's like uh, it's like FOMO. Like it's serious here. FOMO. We're just sitting here like, sh- shit, dude, I just want to be there. <laughs> I just, I just want to be retired right now. I know, right? Yeah, we need to get this business going enough so that you can retire, and then I'm... <laughs> I got enough freaking PTO where I can just take off all the whole month of January. <laughs> yeah, I'll be all retired and I'll be like, man, where's Tristan at? And, and Tanya would be like, well, didn't you know he left for Cades on o- October 30th? <laughs> and I'll be like, when's he coming back? Somewhere around March 1st. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I wish. Be have to make a couple million to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, man, thanks for taking your time out, Cade, and, and spend some time with us. I know you got a busy day tomorrow again, and you had a busy day today, and you're on no sleep as usual. And uh, Absolutely. Keep, keep grinding, brother, and uh, we're going to see you soon. And four. All right, man, talk to you soon. I've been southbound. I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow down, standing in the pouring rain.